Hello and welcome to another edition of The Stench of Truth. I have several issue, issues I want to talk about. I want to try to do this very quickly. I'm sure you noticed that uh, uh, whenever I mention uh, British Petroleum or BP in my videos, uh, the ads that Google puts on, uh, on my video inevitably point you to BP. Uh, so their marketing uh, is uh, quite good uh, and uh, certainly horrible when you think about it because uh, not only are they doing this, uh, you know, when it comes to YouTube, they're doing it in Google searches as well. Apparently Google has, uh, I mean, uh, BP has bought um, searches off of Google uh, for Seize BP. And anytime uh, you do a Google search on Seize BP, uh, you're going to find an ad for British Petroleum and how they're tackling the response in the Gulf. Also, another thing uh, from seasbp.org that is uh, that uh, they have hired a uh, risk management company to handle the claims process. And one of the main goals of this company that they boast to their clients is that they reduce the costs of compensation by paying out less to to uh, people who claim. So, uh, you know, this flies in the face of everything BP is trying to say, that they're going to justly compensate people for losses that they've suffered as a result of their malfeasance. Uh, you know, this is just, a, a, it's like a major slap in the face to everything that uh, BP tells on the one hand in publicity, but behind the scenes is doing something else just like the way they run their business. Uh, drilling this well and all the things accompanied with it, which led to this horrific disaster uh, caused by gross negligence and, and et cetera. Now, I, for one, am in the camp that says that we need to seize BP United States. Every bit of their assets need to be seized immediately in order to make sure that there are assets available to pay all of the damages, 100% of the claims for losses that come from this totally negligent activity on the part of British Petroleum. So I say, yes, seize BP, seize them now, and take all of their assets until the entire compensation process is done. Secondly, I hope that you have seen uh, the video where Representative Etheridge was confronted on the street by a couple of people with a camera who wanted to ask him some questions, where he uh, verbally and physically assaulted the people. The reason this happened, people, is not because Representative Etheridge had a bad day, as he later said in his stupid and ridiculous apology. No, no, my friends, it happened because the jig is up, <clears throat> and the scumbags and slime balls in Washington, D.C., who supposedly represent us, have finally been found out by the majority of people in this country, and that is that they do not represent us, they instead represent the moneyed interests, the elites, corporations, and banks. And this can be readily seen now by anybody who has eyes to see with. Whenever they have continuous and ongoing debate about how they're going to pay for budgetarily extending jobless benefits or some other thing that is going to actually benefit people in this country and they do not even have one minute of debate in passing hundreds of billions of dollars to bail out supposedly too big to fail banks. That is a systematic problem. And that illustrates once and for all who these people actually work for. And it ain't you and me, folks. So if you see your representative or senator or any other scumbag who supposedly represents you on the street, don't be surprised to see them with bodyguards in the future because they know they can't stand up to the people of this country and explain their actions. 
the jig is up. And that's why he did what he did, because he's not able to face people unless they're carrying a briefcase full of cash. And a final comment on Israel as well. You can find endless news sources everywhere that point out terrorist activity against Israel, rightfully so, in the sense that it's news. It needs to be reported. Terrorist activity against Israel is terrorist activity. The problem is that you never find any criticism of the state of Israel in any media. So why don't I talk about terrorist activity against Israel? Because you can find that anywhere. What you can't find is criticism of the state of Israel. And let's get one thing straight. IDF soldiers who were injured whenever they assaulted the Gaza aid flotilla and murdered nine people, possibly 15 because six people are still missing, they were acting as pirates. You attempt to board a ship, I don't care who you say you are. You attempt to board a ship in international waters, you have no right to do so. You are acting as a pirate. The people on those ships have every right to defend the ship. Israel forces were not defending themselves. They were assaulting and attacking that ship totally illegally and anything that resulted after that is illegal therefore they murdered people on that ship let's call it what it is illegal murder what they're doing to Gaza is against international law and has been condemned the blockade has been condemned as collective punishment against an entire people for the action of some. Let's call it for what it is. It's terrorist activity by the state of Israel. And why I talk about it is because you do not hear it from anybody else. You can read all about the suicide bombers in other media, but you're not going to hear a straight forward story about how Israel is doing the same thing. Last but not least, there's been talk recently about the Second Amendment and how there's supposedly a way to go around this via treaty. And supposedly Secretary of State Clinton has signed a treaty on small arms ban and this is going to go uh, going to serve as a backdoor way of getting rid of the Second Amendment and guns in this country. First of all, treaties cannot supersede the Constitution. All you have to do is do a common sense reading of the Constitution to see that that's absolutely absurd. Secondly, the, the Supreme Court has made rulings on this issue and has made it quite clear that treaties cannot supersede the Constitution. But, at the end of the day, let's just say the government decides tomorrow, Second Amendment's canceled, we're just knocking it out. We're going to start sending troops and police out to collect everybody's guns because you no longer have the right to own them. Uh, they come to your door and they say, ma'am or sir, do you have guns in your house? We're here to collect them because it's no longer lawful to own them. Are you going to give them up? That's the only question you really need to know. Just because it's now been said to be illegal, are you going to give up your guns? Are you? It's food for thought on that particular topic. Thank you. Good day.